I'm Hannah Schwein. We are here at 37 on you for Slow Sunday. We hear it's going to be filled with food, fun and people. Come along, let's check it out. We sat down with the co-founder of Slow Sunday, Blessings Chinganga, to find out more about the event and discuss the underlying issues South African black youth are facing in this period of transformation. Um, I just wanted to know, what inspired you to create this event? So it was last year and Spokazi and I, she's the other co-founder, the three of us. It's Spokazi Mate, Liabona Nkubevana and myself. And we were just talking about how there was a lack of a space where people could just come and sit and there's Afro Jazz and Afro Pop playing and there's food and there's a Chisanyama, that type of vibe. We just felt like it really, it wasn't there, specifically the genre, the Afro Pop and the Afro Jazz. We felt like it was really lacking. What inspired the music choice? It's something that we felt that people listen to on a Sunday afternoon. It's really like loungy without being you know something that puts you to sleep mm. and it also just reminded us of like family and being together it's, it's a celebration you know and we particularly wanted it to be a celebration of blackness as well because we wanted to have not just a once-off event that happens you know maybe once a year or twice a year but something that happens regularly where people can feel free particularly black people can feel free to come and you know just relax obviously everybody is welcome but we just wanted to create that space how do you intend to really welcome the outside Graham Sound community to this event? So the way that we're doing it is that every edition of Slow Sunday that we do is going to have a bit of a different theme. So we all operate on three kind of premises. The first one is the food, the second one is drinks and drink specials, and the third one is aesthetic, something to look at. So for this one, we have the bottles, that those are our main aesthetic. We have ones hanging up, and then we have ones that are the centerpieces. But then we wanted to do a photography edition for the next one. So we're going to invite local photographers, and we're already speaking to photographers from the Eastern, from around the Eastern in Cape to come and have like an exhibition type thing. We asked people about the relevance of this event in light of South Africa's political climate. I think it's a great way to de-stress but still get to talk about contemporary issues in a nicer setting. It's like a, a healing space without it being a poster of a healing space. So I think it's very um, forward in terms of creating a safe space for queer people, um, people that don't necessarily um, fit the, the typical um, gender norms and you know heterosexual, like heteronormative type of aesthetic. I like it when we're, we're, we're including Grahamstown as a whole because it's not, I don't feel it when we're closing ourselves in as roads. This is South Africa and we need to bring everyone within. This is Hannah Shmayambuya reporting for Grocott's Mail, Grahamstown.